Have you ever just spent forever planning and working on a personal project only to never finish it? Well, I have, and I'm here to help you learn from my mistakes. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. First things first, you don't wanna stare at this face the entire video. So what I'm going to do is put a lot of Blender B-roll over the top of this video. Not all this B-roll is specifically from the short film I'm working on now, but they all are from my work or my personal projects. I've been trying to make a short film for 10 years and failing. Now, if you've watched my career video where I talk about going from a pet company to a tech giant in three years, you'll know that I haven't been slouching on personal work, but I haven't made the one thing I wanna make, a short film. So why is that? Frankly, it's because I made a lot of beginner mistakes in trying to pursue my own short film. The good news is that over the last 10 years, I've learned quite a bit and I'm finally making good progress and I wanna share some of what I've learned to help you not take 10 years to make your own short film so that hopefully you can produce one much more quickly than I am. I'm not saying you can't spend 10 years on a short film. Ian Hubert just did it and it's been doing very well. It's just not very common that people are able to focus on one project for that long. Regardless, this video will have a lot of tips that will help you on any short film that you're pursuing. Stop. Before you do anything, stop and make a plan. This part is boring. It's not fun. It's not creative, but it will save you so much time when making your short film. So what does planning look like for a short film? First up, you need to determine your goals for your short film. Why do you want to make a short film? Is this just a personal project for fun? Do you want to upload it online to share with people? Do you want to submit it to festivals? Are you making it for a studio? First, you need to get in order why you're making a short film, and that'll help you better make a plan. These next few steps are going to be kind of obvious to some of you, but I still would like to go through them, so just stick to the video. We'll get to the good stuff as we go on, I promise. First up, you're going to need a script, and you know, not every short film is going to have dialogue, so you may just be writing out the actions. If you're sharing this script with other people, you may want to look into an actual scripting format. If you're writing it for yourself, just write whatever works best for you. Next up, you're gonna to need to create a storyboard, and in this storyboard, you're gonna determine the camera shots and the edit you have. 3D takes a lot of time, so you don't wanna make any more content than you have, especially if you're doing this by yourself. Now, if you're not good at drawing, don't worry. As long as you understand what the drawings are, that's all that really matters. But if you really hate the idea of drawing, you can go ahead and make a shot list, which is just a one-line list that will describe each shot as you go with words instead of drawings. A lot of beginners skip this next step, which is really unfortunate because I believe this is why a lot of people burn out halfway through their production. But what you're going to do is spend some time in look development. I recommend using a tool like PureRef to create artboards that display the type of look you're trying to achieve, whether that be lighting, color, or characters. Unless you've been making that style of artwork for a while, you may not find the style you actually want until halfway through production, then you're not gonna to wanna to go back and redo your entire film and you may just end up quitting. After this, you have a full plan to tackle. And with this plan, you know what you can work on every day as you sit down to work. And without this plan, it will most likely fall apart. Trust me, I am painfully aware. So take my advice and plan out your short film before beginning it. This next step is huge. Budget your time. How much time a week can you devote to your short film? Mornings, evenings, weekends? How much can you devote to your short film while maintaining your mental health and responsibilities? This will look different for everybody. Also, when is the most productive time for you to work on it? For me, it's two to three hours in the morning before I start my day job. Consider your priorities. Are you willing to give up an hour of game time or TV to work on a personal project? If not, that's fine. You don't have to make a short film. It's about if you want to, and that may not be a priority for you. Use this to make a routine, and once it becomes a routine, it's gonna become much easier to make progress. It may take you some time to find your routine, and that's totally fine. Just aim to create a routine out of working on it. A bit about our sponsor. Are you looking to level up your 3D skills? Then a great place to look is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of incredible classes for creators. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. They have classes on Blender, character design, productivity, cinematography, illustration, business, and more. I'm a top teacher on the platform, and I host several Blender courses focused on characters and Blender. It's a great place to start learning Blender as I really focus on kind of the basics in these courses and trying to help level up. In my Your First 3D Animation class, I'll walk you through the process of animating your first 3D character. We'll cover the dope sheet, graph editor, and include free character rigs. This class focuses on the basics and it's made for beginners to blender. It's curated specifically for learning and there are no ads. They're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. The first 1,000 people to use this link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Forget perfectionism. This one just kills more projects than any other thing I've ever seen. I've restarted my short film three times now because I couldn't make it at the quality I had in my head. So here I am three years later with no short film. 
I could do this for another 10 years and keep getting better and better, raising the bar in my head. But at some point, you just have to accept it's time to let go of your perfect vision and make the best you can for the skill level you're currently at. This is something I started doing on my Instagram, and you know what happened? I started improving way faster, producing less than perfect artwork in my head, and just actually making artwork and practicing. You can make three to five short films in 10 years and improve your filmmaking so much, rather than spending 10 years trying to make a masterpiece your first time. This is something that I've really struggled with and wish I had known 10 years ago. On that note, don't let yourself get stuck in a learning loop either. Sometimes you think that you just need to train yourself up before starting, which is true, but you can get stuck in what I call a tutorial loop, where you end up watching and trying to learn more content rather than producing your content yourself. You need to indulge in learning content and then also produce to get that experience so that you can move forward and create your own work. Except for my channel. Watch, watch everything on my channel, all the tutorials, everything, and buy all the stuff. Thank you. Don't overcomplicate it. Take a look at this triangle. Fast, cheap, and good. You can only pick two when approaching a project. If you're an independent creator, you most likely will be choosing cheap and good, which means it's going to move slow. You won't have an entire team to make your short film quickly. There's a good chance your first short film might not be your best, and that's totally okay. Did you accomplish your personal goals? Did you learn from it? To me, that's a success. I've been trying to make a complicated fairy tale story for 10 years, but I recently decided to put that idea on pause and focus on a simpler story, and now I'm making way more progress. My goal is to finish this short film and then restart the more complicated one after I've gained more experience and become more efficient. I have a feeling that short film will be a lot better, but that doesn't mean this first one won't be a great learning experience or fun to watch. Utilize asset packs. These are great for filling out your scene and save you tons of time. I've caught wind of the stigma that an artist is supposed to make every single thing in their scene. And to me, that's just not realistic if you want to produce a short film on your own. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying it's an unnecessary roadblock. Plus, it's not just models you can download. You can do textures, audio, camera moves, and more. I put some links below that have some free assets that might help you make your short film. So make sure to check those out as well. Create your own asset packs and templates. For example, if you're using a lighting setup, character rig, grass particle setting, sky scene, or whatever, if it can be templatized, template it. This is about to get easier with the new asset browser in Blender 3.0, but for now you can create a folder full of blends and import things as you need them. That's what I do for a lot of my own reoccurring nature elements, lighting setups and textures. This is how I produce so much Instagram artwork. I recommend creating art pieces with the intention of creating templates from them. For example, I made this scene with the intention of creating a grass particle system to use throughout my short film. Break up your short film into small pieces. I mean, the idea of creating a full short film can be daunting. You know, it's so much work, but you can break it apart into smaller, more digestible goals. You'll notice I've produced a lot of little loops and scenes in this world. That's because I'm building environments, characters, lighting rigs, animations, and other elements that will all be utilized in the final product. I'm creating an entire library of elements through fun, small, bite-sized art projects that can be reused to create my short film easier. This is a great way to keep yourself motivated with smaller projects, goals, and tasks to chip away at the bigger project. Set yourself a deadline, and I know that sounds awful, like you're turning a short film into homework. I get it. But trust me, you're going to be much happier if you complete your short film than you are if you work on it for two years and quit and feel like you wasted your time. Having a deadline eliminates a lot of the issues we discussed prior in this video because you're naturally going to solve those issues in pursuit of meeting that deadline. The great thing is, though, that it's your short film. You can set your deadline. By setting yourself deadlines, you're giving yourself goals and things to work towards, and by working towards those, you're more likely to accomplish those goals. Lastly, I just want to say, don't give up. This journey and process will look different for everybody. It might take you longer than others, and that's okay. Don't be discouraged. We all have to start somewhere. Just because your journey might be more difficult doesn't mean you can't do it. Just stick to it. In the end, if you're willing to put in the work, you'll be able to accomplish your goals. Thank you for watching as usual, and please tag me in any artwork you create. I've actually had some people send me their short films, and it's actually been inspirational to me that people have watched my tutorials, started, and finished short films in the period that I am learning how to make my own. So it's really great that you're out there making short films. I want to see what you create, so please tag me at Sadhan Shadi on Instagram.